Hey, I'm Miss Biz, and this is my quick and dirty guide to crafting in Elder Scrolls Online. I'll start out with some of the basic information about crafting in ESO. I'll break all the crafts down into one of two categories, consumables or equipment. Under equipment, we have woodworking, blacksmithing, and clothing. Under consumables, we have alchemy, provisioning, and enchanting. There's no hard limit as to how many crafts you are allowed to master in Elder Scrolls Online, but you might run into a problem with skill points. Skill points are needed to be able to craft higher level items, get hirelings to bring you things, or use less improvement materials. So when you first start out a character, you might want to take an easy and only learn a couple crafts. Something common between all crafts is the need to harvest or loot materials. The type of materials you loot will be different each time, but all of the crafts need something. Here, I'll show you a few of them. For medium armor, your harvesting is going to be a little bit different. You actually need to kill animals and take their scraps that you'll later turn into hide. Here we have a blacksmithing resource node. You just need to walk up and use it. Keep in mind that in ESO, there is no need to buy tools to allow you to harvest. For alchemy, you'll need to harvest a couple different things, one of those being your reagents, which are plants. Heavy sacks are great for crafters because they often hold a ton of crafting materials. Your solvents for alchemy can also be found in water skins. For provisioning, you're going to need ingredients that you can find inside barrels, baskets, and crates. For woodworking, you're just going to need to find a couple logs. For clothing, you're going to need to harvest some plants. Occasionally, when you're harvesting different resource nodes, you might find crawlers or worms or other fishing bait. Once Orsinium is released, these will be used in a select few recipes as well, so be sure to take them. For enchanting, you'll need three different types of runes. One of those types is a potency rune. Always be sure to check all the backpacks you come across. These can have racial style stones, trait stones, recipes, and other crafting goodies. Another rune type you'll need for enchanting is essence. The final rune type that you need for enchanting is aspect. Once you've rounded up all the materials you need, you're just going to have to find some crafting stations. Here you can see a clothing station, here's a woodworking station, and here's a blacksmithing station. When you first open up a crafting station, you'll find a couple different tabs at the top. Refine, Creation, Deconstruct, Improvement, and Research. You'll need to start off by refining your materials. The materials you picked up from your resource nodes are not refined and you'll need 10 of those in order to be able to refine them. You'll get somewhere between 7 and 10 refined materials. You also have a good chance at getting other crafting materials such as style stones and improvement materials back when you are refining. When you swap over to the creation screen, you'll see a couple different tabs at the top. If you're at blacksmithing or woodworking, you'll have the choice between weapon or apparel. And if you're at a special set crafting station like I am right now, you'll have an option to actually craft set pieces if you know enough traits. The first thing you need to select is what item you would like to create. You just move over in the tab for this. The second selection you need to make is your material type. The material actually designates the level range of the item. You can fine tune what level the item is by adding more materials to it. The third option you may have is to select a style. All this does is change what the weapon or armor looks like. You will actually need to find racial motifs in order to learn other styles. You start out by knowing your own racial style. You will also need to loot stones throughout the world to use when crafting an item. You may also have the option to select a trait. 
If you have researched a trait for that specific item and you have a trait stone available, you'll be able to select a trait to add to this item. You will not be able to change the trait once an item has been crafted. Once you have made all your selections, you just hit R to craft the item. The deconstruction screen is pretty self-explanatory. It will deconstruct any item you choose to. You'll have a chance to actually receive some of the materials back from that item. The improvement tab is how you increase the quality of an item. This may raise the stats as well it may affect the trait that you have on it. Each time that you raise the quality, you're going to have to use a little bit more improvement materials. You also have a chance to fail. If you do not raise your chance to 100% by adding more improvement materials and it fails, you will lose the item and the improvement materials that you tried to craft with. The research screen is how you will be able to add traits later on or be able to use the special set crafting stations. You'll need to research each trait for each individual item and these will double up in time as you learn more of them. You'll need that item with that trait available on it to research. This will destroy the item. Once you have found and used some recipes to learn them on your character, as well found some ingredients, you'll just need to find a cooking fire to start your provisioning craft. In the provisioning window, you'll have two options, cook or brew. Cooking allows you to make a food that will actually raise a max attribute or more if it's a rare type of recipe. Drinks will increase the regeneration of your attribute. The type of recipe actually determines what attribute that food is going to raise. Blue foods always increase two attributes, whereas purple always increases three. As long as you select Have Ingredients in your provisioning interface, you'll be able to see all the items that you can craft. Remember, all your crafting materials in your bank you are able to use when you're at a crafting station. All you need to do is select a food or drink and craft it. That's all there is to provisioning. Provisioning has two rare epic ingredients. These are mostly found doing crafting writs or provided by hirelings. There is also currently one legendary recipe and one legendary ingredient in the game, Perfect Row. You find this by filleting whitefish that you catch while fishing. When the Orsinium DLC is released, we'll actually see another legendary recipe as well as some interesting recipes that use fish bait and alchemy ingredients. Here is an alchemy station. When you're inside the alchemy station, you'll be able to divide your inventory up into solvents and reagents. For alchemy, in order to use three reagents, you will actually need to invest a skill point once you've leveled it up high enough. The solvent is what determines the level of the potion you are about to create. When you are first starting out, you will not know any of the traits, nor will it show you what potion you are about to create. You'll have to experiment and try them out to learn all the traits. You can also eat a reagent to learn its first trait. When reagents have common attributes, they'll actually create a potion that has that attribute. Reagents can actually have conflicting traits, which will actually take that ability away from the potion. As well, there are some traits that will cause the potion to have ill effects. The potions with ill effects are not really worth making in ESO as long as you've already learned all of the traits. Once you have learned traits or created a potion, the next time you go into the alchemy station and select those same reagents, it will actually show you what potion you are about to create. With alchemy, not all the different reagents can mix together to make a potion. There is a chance that it will fail and not craft a potion. Be careful and write these down because the game will not warn you the next time you put those reagents together. This is an enchanting table. Here you will be able to select the different runes that you had to harvest in order to make some glyphs. First we need to select our potency rune. This will select the level of the glyph as well if it has additive or subtractive properties. Your essence rune will actually give your glyph a property such as frost, stamina, stamina, regen, armor, and so on. 
Your aspect rune actually just determines the quality of your glyph. Your stats will go up if you use a better quality aspect rune. Like alchemy, if you have never used those three ingredients together before, you will not know what that glyph creates. The next time you go to use those same three ingredients though, it will show you what glyph you are about to make. Unlike alchemy though, there is no way to not craft a glyph. Every combination of all the different runes in ESO crafts an actual glyph. You can also use extraction in enchanting. This is actually a really good way to get inspiration points, which is your crafting experience. When you're extracting glyphs, you have a chance to extract runes. You can improve this chance by putting a skill point into the appropriate passive. That's all for the quick and dirty crafting guide for Elder Scrolls Online. If you're still confused, you can review my longer extended version of this guide, or I also have guides on each craft specifically and some larger topics such as researching and all the traits available. Thanks for joining! Safe travels in Tamriel! Mm -hmm.